while the idea of pure silence sounds so blissful, I don't believe that you're ever going to reach a point where you're going to have complete silence. However, we don't really need it to be silent. What we need is to take control of the volume, to turn down the volume on the voices that make us feel like garbage, and turn up the volume that tell us we got this. So here's what I mean when I say turning down the volume. When we begin to take control of our mental health, we realize that all of these voices in our head don't necessarily belong to us. What they are are echoes of the things that other people have said to us, things that other people have put on us that play on repeat in our minds over and over and over again. It is so much easier said than done to turn those voices down. But with the right work and with the right focus on things and with the right amount of effort, we can take control of the volume dial and turn it down. There are a few different ways to do this. Number one, if you can't quite turn down the volume on the negative voices right now, just start turning up the volume on things until we can drown out those negative voices. I don't know about y'all, but when I'm having a really hard day, I love to get in the car and turn on that metal music. I pick the songs that have the most screaming in them so I can turn the volume all the way up and just sing and scream along to the lyrics. Does this make my struggles go away? No. Does this make the voices that make me feel like I'm not enough go away? No. But what happens is that I become so focused on the singing and the screaming and just the feeling of being in the car surrounded by that noise going to a new destination that in that moment, I'm not thinking about the negative things. So in a very literal sense, you can turn up the volume on things that help you to feel better. I want you to purposefully look for things to turn up the volume on. Maybe you find a YouTuber and you fall in love with them and you love what they're saying and they're lifting you up. Maybe it's a podcast. Maybe it is uplifting music from someone who has, you know, crawling out of something that you can relate to. Turn the volume up on that and turn it up consistently. It may not fix everything right away. In fact, I don't think the word fix is the right term at all. But when you allow yourself to be filled by these positive voices, what happens over time is that your brain begins to listen. The very first time you listen to things like affirmations or positive self-talk, anything Thing, you're gonna roll your eyes at it. I did too. The more you do it, even though your brain doesn't believe it, eventually what happens is it goes, what if? Like, I don't buy it, but what if? What if this is worth trying? What if they're right? Like, I know I'm worthless and I know I'm not enough and I know I suck, but what if? on the small possibility, what if I believed that I could do it just for a second? It seems like it's really small and it seems like it's no big deal, but over time that just for a second will turn into a minute and then five minutes and then 10 minutes and then an hour. And I know that that's oversimplifying it and it's all so much easier said than done, but allowing yourself to turn up the volume on these things will help you to combat the negative things. The next thing to turn up the volume are things like affirmations. I get it, a lot of people think these are woo-woo and not worth it, but I'm not coming from the woo standpoint. I'm coming from the science standpoint. A lot of the reason that you believe what you believe is because people said over and over and over that you weren't enough. Whether it was society, whether it was parents, whether it was an abusive partner, people told you you weren't enough and eventually you believed it. Why? Because it was said to you over and over and over. If it was said to you when you were a child, when your brain was still malleable, that got stuck in your head a lot easier. Now that you're grown, your brain's a lot more stubborn because that's literally wired into your brain's DNA. To combat that, it's going to take more work and it's going to take more repetition. So if you get into your daily affirmations and you say, I am strong, I am capable, I am intelligent, I am worthy, you're gonna roll your eyes at first. And in fact, you're probably rolling your eyes right now and that's okay. It doesn't matter that you don't believe them. It doesn't matter that you find them stupid. It matters that you say them. An affirmation isn't anything woo. An affirmation is just something you say to affirm a belief. If you tell yourself over and over that you suck, that's an affirmation. You're affirming the belief that you suck. If you tell yourself that you're stupid, that you're not enough, you're affirming those beliefs. Those are affirmations. Why not just try something different? Why not just try a different affirmation? You don't have to believe it. You can think it's stupid and you don't have to believe me. 
but in order to prove me wrong, you're gonna have to say them daily, consistently, for at least 60 days. And if after that, if you say them consistently to yourself for 60 days, multiple times a day, and they don't work, feel free to come back and let me know. But just try. Let yourself try and see. And just that shift alone can change more than you think. The next thing that we can do to turn up the volume on the positive things is to find something and do it for you. Not for anybody else, not your mama, not your brother, not your clients, not your boss, not your coworker. Do something for you. And heck, bonus points if it's something that you love but you suck at. For me, it's video games. I'm really not all that great. I'm halfway decent at ESO, but that's just because I got a lot of hours in on that game. I really struggle to play online with other people because I question my ability to show up. I question my ability to do what needs to be done in order to support my team. So I don't play online very often. Playing online with other people increases my anxiety, so I don't. Maybe I will in the future, and I hope that I will in the future. But right now, I stick with playing on my own, fighting through things and leveling up myself, both figuratively in my life and literally in the video game. I do it because it's fun. I'm not great. I'm not wonderful. I'm not doing it for any other reason than I love to escape into this weird medieval world. It brings me joy. So I do that. Maybe your thing is at video games. Maybe you love to bake, but you burn bread every single time you put it in the oven. Maybe you love to draw, but you can hardly draw a stick person. Maybe you love to write, but your stories come out terrible. That's fine. You're doing it for you, not for anybody else. So now that we know how to turn up the volume on the positive things, how do we turn down the volume on the negative things? Ask yourself, is it your voice? or is it somebody else's voice? Like I said earlier, we don't tell ourselves these things. These things are implanted in us by other people. So the voice in your head that says you're never gonna make anything of yourself, is it you or was it your mom not believing in you? Was it you or was it that jerk off of a teacher who made you feel like you were stupid? Answering these questions seems silly, but once you get to the root of who those voices belong to, it becomes a lot easier to say, hey, I don't have to believe that because right now you've affirmed these beliefs for so long that your brain looks for evidence to prove them true. But if you can pinpoint the fact that those voices, they didn't come from your brain, they were implanted in your brain by someone who was horrible or maybe even well-meaning, once you can do that, it's easier to turn the volume down and go, you know what, I don't wanna to listen to that voice anymore. Number two, this is especially important if you've pinpointed where that voice came from but it still feels incredibly true. Ask yourself, is it really true? Is it honestly true? Is there no evidence proving otherwise? Are you actually stupid? Think about it. If you've kept yourself alive this long, even if it's been a struggle, even if you didn't want to, even if the voices in your head told you that you shouldn't, you're incredible and you're a lot stronger and smarter than you think you are. Look for evidence. You don't have to believe it. Just look for something that proves that belief false. The more you do this consistently, even if it's one a day or once a week, you sit down and let yourself really process through this, you're going to find that it's a lot easier to turn that volume down. As you're working on turning down those negative voices, there's one more thing I really want you to focus on. Allow yourself to believe that you're worthy of turning down the voices. A lot of us hold on to that shame, the guilt, the frustration, and the anger that those voices bring because we feel that we deserve it. We feel like it's our fault. We feel like if we don't have that guilt, then we're not paying penance for the things that we did wrong. I deal with this all the time. As a single mom and a son with special needs, there's a lot of places where I failed. I feel like if I let go of that guilt, I'm not doing something that I deserve. I have screwed up so many times that I deserve to have that. And if I don't feel that guilt, then I'm not paying penance and somehow my son's gonna pay for it. Saying that out loud sounds kind of ridiculous. So actually, here's the final thing. Allow yourself to say it out loud or to journal it out. Once you begin to get these thoughts out on paper, you'll see that it's actually kind of ridiculous. Not to demean you or to put you down, but once you just get these thoughts out on paper and let yourself really see these things, your brain's gonna have a hard time justifying it the way it can while it's swirling in chaos in your brain. It's pretty ridiculous to think that I'm, I should feel guilt every day because if I don't feel guilt every day, somehow my son's gonna pay for it. But somehow my brain's convinced me of that. But saying it out loud makes me see that it's actually kind of dumb. And I'm actually probably hurting my son by forcing this guilt down my throat every day because I'm not showing up for him the way that I really need to. Should I feel guilty about that? No. 
No, because that's guilt upon guilt for feeling guilt and we're not doing that. But having that realization is going to help me turn down that volume more knowing that while I thought I deserved this, it's actually causing harm to the exact thing that I want in life. So I need to shift my thinking. It's so much easier said than done and you're going to screw up. There are going to be days where you don't hear the voices at all. And then there are going to be days where it feels like the volume is so loud that it's deafening and you don't know how to handle it. All of that is okay. All of that is normal. You are not broken. You're not a failure. You are healing. And a lot of it is brought on by the fact that other people did things to us that we didn't ask for. Other people convinced us that we weren't worth it. Other people convinced us that our thoughts, feelings, emotions were wrong. We don't deserve to feel the guilt and shame that we feel every day. And this, the fact that you watched this video is a powerful first step to really taking control of all of that. So I hope you know how incredibly proud of you I am. And even more, I want you to be proud of yourself.